I'm going to do a little short unboxing video of uh, something I just picked up. It's a Sightmark Ultra Shot Plus Series QD Reflex Sight. QD meaning it's quick uh, detach. Comes in a neat little bag, a little zipper foam padded bag. Kind of hard to get out to. There it is. It's a little bit bulky, but I wanted a bigger one with a little bit bigger field of view. Comes with a wrench and a key to adjust it. And some instructions. My favorite part, reading instructions. Let's get a little bit closer view of this thing. All right, let's get a little closer look at this thing. This is it. Like I said, it's kind of bulky, but it has a pretty good field of view on it. Looks well, well made, pretty rigid. The battery goes under here, and the little battery cover is tethered, thank God, so I don't lose it. Because, you know, I will. It just pops off pretty easy, too. That's the battery. How hard do you think that's going to be to find? CR123A. 3 volt, 1300 milliamp hour battery. Anyway, let's put that back in there. That old spring makes it tough. It does say that it's shockproof. To what degree, I don't know. It says it is weather resistant. Not waterproof, but weather resistant. Anyway, simple up and down elevation. Windage adjustment. You do not know what's in that hole right there. Don't want to find out either. That looks like it may be tension. For, uh, for the windage on that side. Anyway, it does have a pretty wide clamp. Opens up without having to be adjusted. You know, you don't have to put a wrench on the side and get it set to your rail. It looks like it's got a pretty wide range of adjustment right there already. The power button and the illumination. It has, uh, I think, three or four different brightness uh, settings. And if you can see it, these are the reticles. When you turn it on, you can get all four of these reticles. A little crosshair with a dot in the middle, a dot, um, some other kind of a crosshair with a dot in the middle, and a circle with a dot in the middle. It is red and green illuminated by pushing the button again. It'll change color, brightness and color. And that will just simply change your reticle that easy. And like I said, it comes with the wrenches to get it set up. I've not read the instructions to find out what that wrench is for. And I don't see it. So that may be something I have to read. I hate that part. And the neat little Allen key with a plastic handle on it. I guess they can get a better grip to adjust it for windage. Because it is an Allen wrench, it adjusts for windage and elevation. Anyway, let's read what its features are. Cast aluminum alloy housing with protective shield, red and green reticle illumination, low power consumption, digital switch controls, multiple reticles, interlock internal locking system, IPX4 water resistant, weatherproof, shockproof, 50 cal it says, Wide field of view, parallax corrected, adjustable quick, quick, uh, quick detach weaver mount, unlimited eye relief. Included is a neoprene cover, adjustment tools, battery, and manual. And it goes over in detail. 
how to adjust it, the settings, power settings, illumination settings, troubleshooting section. I've never had any luck with the troubleshooting section on anything. And it looks like at least two, three, four pages, four blank pages in case you want to maybe take notes. I don't know. Anyway, let me zoom back out and show you why I got this because I really don't shoot pistols with Picatinny rails or rifles uh, where I need a, 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 a reflex sight, something like this. I usually use a scope. So let me show you why I got this along with some other stuff. All right, so while I was out and I picked up the sight mark reflex sight, I also picked up a uh, large open face reel. I wanted a really big one. It's a uh, quantum, but I'm, the brand and stuff, I'm not bragging about what the reel is. Just saying I got one, it has a specific use. I also picked up a uh, Cajun Archery, the Wee Stinger Point. I'll show you this more in a second. And I picked up some small game and target points. These are the, we just call them shockers, blunt points. It has a blunt tip on it and a little wire on there so that it uh, won't penetrate anything. And these, of course, fit an arrow. And I picked up some cheap 100 grain field tips for uh, machining on to make for certain things fit. And I picked up a QD Picatinny rail. I've already got one of these on my Bulldog. Works pretty good. Locks down. Seems to repeat real nice. Uh, not terribly heavy, but well made. Really, I don't think you're going to break this. And 150 foot of monkey wire. And what else did I get here? I got an M-Lock rail select section. These are just a, a Picatinny rail that, that mounts to an M-Lock system on something. If you're familiar with your ARs and things like that, that's, that's what that's going to be. I got a couple of these. They are cheap. The rail itself is plastic. I really wasn't interested in the rail as much as I was the mounting hardware that comes along with it. The uh, actual M-Lock hardware. I have a specific use for those. And I picked up a quiver. A small, lightweight, cheap quiver. Quiver. With a quick detach system I guess you have to open it up to make it go on don't you there we go anyway these screws right here will, will work in this and this quiver will attach to an M-Lock system I know what you're thinking what an M-Lock system got to do with it why are you showing me a bunch of stuff for bow hunting, bow fishing, stuff like that? And I know you're an air gun guy. So let me gather up my stuff and I'll show you what I've got in mind. All right, so let me show you what I came up with. You've already seen my unboxing video of the Umarex Air Javelin. Put my sight mark on here. That's exactly what I got this for is this gun. And... It's got a really wide field of view. It's e easy to shoot with both eyes open. You can see the everything around you plain as day and easily see what you're putting the red dot on. And I stole some hardware from the M-Lock rail section. Really just like a little cam lock, I guess, uh, T-nut type. Mounted the quick detach that came with this quiver to the side of it. So now I have my arrows with me. That worked out really, really nice. So I got a little fumbling to do with this, but I just got to kind of set on there. I still got to drill and tap some holes, maybe add something to it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it to mount it permanent just yet. But the quick detach Will not fit with the quiver that's going to be an issue might have to 
change something around. It fits, it just won't, won't latch. The lever touches the quiver. So anyway. That's that. Now you're probably all catching on to why I've got a reel mounted to my air javelin and an air bolt gun. And you know, of course I bought some some string for it, some uh, monkey wire, 150 foot of it. I also bought these fishing barbed fishing tips that go on uh, fiberglass bows. And I bought some safety slides. They go on the, the arrows. And this is the Umarex arrow that comes with air javelin. And this is just a bolt that I picked up at a local sporting goods store with a 100 grain field tip on it that unscrews and comes out. I pulled the knock out of the back. This carbon fiber on this aftermarket is thicker walled than the one that comes with the Umarex. But it has the same ID, so it pushes over the barrel exactly like it's supposed to. And even locks onto a little O-ring at the back like it's supposed to. So that gave me a, a little hope that I can put these safety slides on here. The only thing I can't do, the safety slides for fiberglass arrows come with the little screws. And they come with a little stop. You were supposed to have the stop. Mounted back here to the arrow, you're supposed to drill a hole through it, put the screw in the fiberglass arrow, so this thing has got something that it actually bumps up against, right? Most of the fiberglass arrows I've seen that you can buy already made for bow fishing don't have any fletchings on them. They're just smooth, so you put this at the end of it so this doesn't come right off the, the back of it or the, the knock, take the knock off. So anyway, I'm not going to use this. I'm fixing to glue something on there. Maybe uh, I saw a thing a long time ago where you like putting putting an eye on a an old fishing pole, re wrapping it with thread and some kind of glue. I think I'm gonna put something like that right here so this bumps into it and doesn't hit the fletchings. I think the fletchings would make a poor stop for that. They're already getting wrinkled up shooting into the the foam target, the backstop that I've got. These things shoot with enough force. They go about halfway up the fletching into the foam target, no matter which direction, whether you shoot it the, the narrow way or the long way. They bury all the way in and it wrinkles them up a little bit. So this thing slides right over this. So this diameter, this, this diameter is almost the same as the fiberglass arrow and it's the ID of a aftermarket carbon fiber. So this thing is going on here once I make a stop. And it has a 50 grain field tip on it. And this tip. If I take the field tip out, this tip will push on there and glue on. Perfect. Nothing to it. Like it was made for it. So, anyway, I'm going to go uh, bow fishing with an air javelin. I've checked into bow fishing, and it seems like you don't really need a powerful bow to get the job done. Everybody's talking about, you know, 20 to 40 pound draw bows, and that's just not that powerful. That's a relatively a, like a, a, a youth bow. So this thing has got 34 foot-pounds of energy, shoots the lighter Umarex uh, arrows at around 315 feet per second, somewhere in there. I think they rate it 350, or 300 plus feet per second. Anyway, I don't think it's going to shoot this heavier aftermarket bolt quite the same. So I'm going to turn this field tip down on this in my lathe. I'm going to turn this OD down and see if I can't press this uh, barb tip for bow fishing over this and make a screw in tip out of it to fit the aftermarket air bolt. It's not air bolt, it's a crossbow bolt. See if I can make it fit this thing and this ought to slow it down even more and I've never bow fished. I don't know how much power it's going to take but this is the lowest powered air bolt, you know, arrow gun you can buy. The big brother to this, the Umarex uh, Air Saber, has quite a bit more power than this one. And you can take a big jump up to the, the Benjamin Pioneer Airbow, which I think is 
probably the most powerful. I'm not positive on that, but I think it is. And uh, of course, they make some air bolts uh, special for the the Benjamin Bulldog, the some of the Dragon Claws and stuff. The 50 cal's they make an air bolt for some of those. I'm gonna try doing some some carp fishing with this and see how it works out. Just see how much penetration I get through the fish. If it's too much power, not enough power, I'm gonna see see if I can go from there. Also, got plans for the bear javelin. This one's going to become a regulated PCP. Still working on some parts for that. Um, anyway, that's going to be it. This is going to be my my bow fishing rig. I'm fixing to be trying it out here. Hopefully next week. Hopefully next week. I've got somebody that brought it up to me that they have some carp they've had in a pond for better than 20 years and they would like them cold because they don't need that many in there anymore. The pond's nice and cleaned up and the carp are way bigger than the catfish that he dearly loves. So they aggravate the catfish when it's feeding time and that's, he's retired and that's what he does, goes out and feeds his catfish in his pond. So I told him I'd come over there and call a couple of them for him. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do it with. The Umarex Air Javelin shooting a homemade fishing arrow as soon as I get it done. Wish me luck.